lift your hands and receive the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Your hands receive the presence of the Lord. Receive the glory of God. Let it minister to your heart. Let it minister to your spirit, to your mind, to your emotions. Receive the glory of God. Let your fire come rushing in. Koshatai. Come on, see it. Come on, see it. Let your fire. Somebody shall fire the presence of God, the glory of God. Hallelujah. Is there um, a mechanic here today? That's your business. Your Amen. I'm sorry. You own one? Okay. Can you come up here just a moment? Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Amen. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. You're going to receive this blessing. How many know I don't do this? very much, amen, but the Holy Spirit spoke that mechanic, how weird is that, huh, oh, for real, okay, okay, really, hallelujah, stretch your hands out, church, glory to God, you don't need to know all the details, you just need to know the Holy Spirit is working, there's something special that God wants to do in uh, your marriage, and in your, your home and your business. And um, I know you're new to Fresh Start. I don't know you very well. I know you've been through Journey to Belong. And you, I had conversation with you a handful of times. I sense your passion uh, for the Lord and the things of the Spirit. And uh, uh, as I speak over you today, I just sense an attack from the enemy that is, you know, just swirling with different kinds of tentacles, if you will, uh, to try to bring chaos and to try to bring... Uh, confusion, but the Holy Spirit picked you out today. Uh, hallelujah. So I speak the blessing of the Lord over you and over your business and over your marriage and over your call of God on your life uh, in that capacity. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, I feel the glory of God. Let every operative work of the enemy be defeated now by the blood of Jesus Christ and the prophetic word hallelujah I speak the full blessing of God and every deception of the enemy we call null and void everybody pray in the Holy Ghost right now come on in the name of Jesus we rebuke the enemy right now and Lord I thank you that your blessing reside upon them upon their home upon their marriage upon their business let their hands be blessed. I pray, oh God. Hallelujah. Come now. Lord, you just said mechanic. That's all you said to me, God. That's all you said. And so, God, you do the rest. Holy Spirit, breathe on them. Breathe on this business. Breathe. Go speak deep within. May they follow tenaciously the plan that you have for them, God. And may they hear only your voice and not the voice of another, I pray. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Grab grab Mike and Annette for me real quick right there. Can y'all come pray with her? Keep praying, church. Keep praying. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for her. Speak blessing over her. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. This is another mechanic here. She's not, but her husband is. Amen. And we're going to pray that the that that what the devil has stolen, that God's going to restore. And he must return sevenfold what he has stolen. So what has been lost in the name of Jesus, I call it back seven times greater. Better job, better opportunity, better pay. In the name of Jesus, I call it back. In Jesus' name. The devil is a liar. Father, I thank you now. Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What the enemy has stolen, Lord God, we thank you that you restore. You restore what he has eaten away. You restore what has been lost. Come on, church. Come on. Reach out like this was you here today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, open up doors. Open up opportunity. Open up. Open up. Open. Open up. Open up opportunity. Open up jesus we thank you now we thank you now we thank you now the glory the glory the glory the glory goes before him the glory goes before him hallelujah receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah Lift your hands all over the building the holy spirit's just moving come on just receive the blessing the impartation of the the Lord, hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands. God's got, you say, I want a word. Well, lift your hands and get your word this morning. Come on. Come on, lift your hands. God can talk to you. God's speaking all the time. We just got to listen. We got to, hallelujah. 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 Somebody just needs to know today that God cares about you and He cares about the little details that's frustrating you right now. He cares about those little details that are frustrating you. Everybody, anybody, anybody ever had any details that frustrate you? Yeah. And God cares about that. And and you got to align yourself with His Word and His way. And, and He wants you to know He cares about that. And But don't let it consume you, the Holy Spirit said. Don't let that consume you. Let Be consumed by Him. Be consumed by His Word. Be consumed by His details. You focusing on your details and all the while God's saying, if you just focus on my details, I'll work out your details and then you won't have that headache in the morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and receive freedom. Come on, freedom. Freedom from bondage of stress. In the name of Jesus, I break stress off of you in Jesus' name. All right, one more thing, and then I'm going to preach this morning right here. My brother, and I should know your name because we had lunch with you all. You're the one I, was, I saw the, the Holy Spirit showed me. Yeah, yeah, you're going like that. That's him right there. Yep, 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 yep. That's you. That's you. Yeah, come on up here. Amen. The Holy Spirit showed me your face in, uh, in worship, and then he said mechanic. Now, I know what you do, sort of, because you told us, I, you know, I know what you do. Amen. But, uh, amen. Hi. Glory to God. And so I want to pray of you because I saw your face in worship. And and here's the thing. How many know the Lord is adding so many new people to our body? Amen. And I can't possibly remember everyone, but I saw your face. and But I saw you in a different place in the sanctuary. But that's all right. You can sit anywhere you want. Amen. But but I don't, I'm just supposed to pray of you. And I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit. Y'all bring it up as I pray. Raise your hands. I'll pray over all three of you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Roshite, I pray for my brother right now in Jesus' name. Koshite. Hanamakete. Come over here, babe. Hallelujah. Lord, I just pray that the glory of the Lord order his steps. 
the glory of the Lord ordered. Lord, I know he's sensitive to you. I know they are, Lord. I know, oh God, I pray the glory, order his steps right now. Lord, order his steps, order his way, order it now, Holy Ghost. Ah, yemeshete. And Ramakishtani, Atayata. Hallelujah. And the Lord just wanted us to pray over you. Hallelujah. It's not anything we are, it's all that He is. Pray over you, all oh, the blessing of the Lord, and that the glory order your way. And if that means, oh, my shiki tiko dromo shin and emeke are you their son? Glory to God. Are you their son? Father, in the name of Jesus, touch him. Touch him with your fire. Touch him with your power. Touch him with your fire. Touch him with your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. I call. Hey, I pull out the call of God in his life in the name of Jesus somebody lift your hands and begin to give God glory I want to see you say I want to see you feel you hear you Jesus come and have your way come on cry out I want to give you all of me my heart and so my lift your hands and tell him I want to see you feel you Hear you, Jesus. Shall it all of my heart and so my every day. I want to see you, feel you, hear you, Jesus. Come and have your way. I want to give you all of me, my heart. Bring it up. Come up. Shut up. I want to see you, feel you, hear you, Jesus. Come and The glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. Have your way. I want to give you all of me, my heart and soul, my everything. I want to see you, feel you, hear you, Jesus, come and have your way. I want to give you all of me, my heart and soul, my everything. I want to see you. Come on, one more time. One more time. I want to see you, feel you, hear you, Jesus, come and have your way. I want to give you all of me, my heart and soul, my everything. I want to see you, feel you, hear you, Jesus, come and have your way. I want to give you all of me. Lord, we lift up our worship. Come on, lift up your thanksgiving to the Lord today. The presence of the Lord is powerful in our midst today. Can we can we lift up the hands as a as a as a physical sign of honor today? Oh, just honor the Lord. Come on. I want you to, to for about 30 seconds to be verbal right now, audible. Just honor the Lord. Honor him. He's holy, He's righteous, He's worthy. It's about you, Lord. It's all about you, God. It's all about you. It's all about you, God. It's all about you. Oh, we love you, Lord. You are holy, you are mighty, you are holy, you are righteous. You're worthy. We lift you up, Jesus. Consume us in this place today with your glory. 
Consume us, O oh God. Burning fire, burning fire, burning fire, burning fire, burning fire. Oh, consume us, oh God, your holy fire. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Jesus, for who you are, for what you've done for us. We honor your glory in this room today. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, God. Lord, we know that you have your eye on us, but God, may we have our eyes on you at all times. I say, God, may we have our eyes on you, on you, in this place. Father, for your presence, hallelujah. If you remain standing, I'm going to read the scripture this morning try to move quickly through the word I feel like that um, it's a very important word today All the, any word that's preached from here is but as I read the word um, the text for this morning I want you to uh, if you were not here last week I want you to uh, listen to or watch it online it's been up since last Sunday and um, not because I'm preaching it, uh, the word I would say it about anybody if I felt that it was necessary. But um, around here, we don't preach messages for information. We preach for assignment. And so when you miss a week, you miss a message and a word on an assignment. And I don't preach just to give you information. I preach because I have an assignment. And uh, this week is part two of Perpetual Fire. And it is connected to last week's message. And so you may be a little... Uh, lost in some of it this week if you were not here last week, but it is online uh, that you can watch it. And so let's read today as I continue in perpetual fire, the posture for the fire, the posture for the fire. Can we say that together this morning? The posture for the fire, the posture for the fire. Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. Now Moses was past pasturing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of the Midian, and he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness, and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. It was the mountain of God, emphasizing it was the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord, which was God himself, appeared to Moses in a blazing fire. Hallelujah. Somebody shout fire from the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush was burning with fire and yet the bush was not consumed and so Moses said I must turn aside now and I must see this marvelous sight why the bush is not burned up and when the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to look God called to him from the midst of the bush and he said Moses Moses and he said Moses said here am I and then he said the Lord said do not come near here remove your sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground holy ground can we say holy ground and I just want to make a note here that I will hopefully end with today that holiness follows fire Holiness follows fire. Amen. You may be seated. It is a really big deal when God sends his fire. It's a really big deal when God sends his fire. And God has chosen Fresh Start, us as well as others who are in the right posture, to visit us with his fire. Can you help me preach this morning? So I want to say again that it's a really big deal when God sends his fire. It's a real big deal. God is represented in all different ways throughout the word of God. But because connecting with last week, which I don't have time to revisit that, because of how he's visited us with fire and the assignment that we have, um, it's a big deal that we experience the fire of God and the presence of God in a heightened manner, in an increased manner. 
Um, it's a big deal that we're in revival, yes? I'll ask this side. It's a big deal that we're in revival, amen? It's a big deal when God sends his fire. And we saw last week from the message Perpetual Fire that God sent that fire on the altar of sacrifice from his very presence in heaven. That's where the fire originated. And it consumed in Leviticus chapter 6, we preached out of, it consumed the burnt offering, which had to be totally consumed. It was a, it was a sacrifice and an offering of consecration and commitment. And God's command more than several times in that passage of Scripture was this, to keep the fire burning on the altar. Amen? To keep the fire burning on the altar. Look at your neighbor and tell them, let's keep it burning. Amen? In this passage of Scripture that I just read to you, we see another incident where God sent his fire. Moses had the call of God on his life to be the deliverer for his people, and he was on the backside of the desert tending sheep, learning how to be a good leader. Amen. I'll say that again because there's a few that need to hear that. He was on the backside of the desert, tending sheep, learning how to be a good leader. Yeah. So maybe if we don't spend very much time on the backside of the desert, we're not ready yet. Can I just say and move on? Amen. So anyway, that's not the message today. But then because he spent the time on the backside, God suddenly showed up. And I just want to add this, that sometimes it seems like God's not showing up in our life. It seems like God's taking forever and ever and ever. And that's why we're not tending to what he's called us to tend to at the moment, even if it is on the backside. But I'm telling you, if you just go after that, God will show up and it will seem like a suddenly and God will speak to you. Amen. That was message number one. Amen. And God suddenly shows up to Moses and he gives him, watch this, suddenly he gives, he shows up as Moses is in the right place and the right posture and he gives him his marching orders for the rest of his life and the rest of his ministry. Come on. Hallelujah. God chose to come with fire. God chose to come to Moses with fire. This fire that we see in this scripture is literally a manifestation of God himself. Literally God manifesting in the Old Testament. A manifestation of God's tangible presence. When fire of God touches your life, you will never be the same. You will never have to ask, is God real? You will never debate whether you're going to read your Bible, pray, and go to church. When the fire of God touches your life, you will never do church the same again. You will forever be changed. Fire never leaves anything the same. It forever changes the landscape of everything that it touches. So when fire touches, when the fire of God touches our life, it changes the landscape of our life. It changes priorities. It changes choices. It changes how we do things. It changes how we perceive things it changes because it burns out everything that is not of God and puts in everything that is God from the inside out when God shows up with his fire you better know it's a big deal it's a very big deal when God shows up in his fire it's a big deal it's why the enemies want to take it out of Pentecostal churches today but I spent a great bit of time last week talking about the power of the fire and the necessity of getting it back in the church, the spirit-filled church. We learned that here at Fresh Start, everybody say we're a keeper of the fire. Come on. Shout it louder. Come on. We're a keeper of the fire. Our assignment demands that we keep the fire. Last week, we grabbed the wood to keep the fire, yes? And we brought the sacrifice, which was us, to keep the fire burning, amen, on the altar. And the bottom line of last week's message dealt with the giving of our lives as a sacrificial burnt offering and worked all around that. But I want to take it a step further today 
to keep the fire burning because it's a big deal when God shows up with his fire. And um, don't get tired of me saying that this morning, all right? Because it's a big deal when God shows up with his fire. It's a really, really big deal. But, but you know, you, you, you can bring a sacrifice, and if you don't have, you can bring a sacrifice. Now, I'm connecting with last week here. You can bring a sacrifice, but if you don't have the awe of God, and you don't have the fear and the reverence of God, that sacrifice just results in religious activity. It results in religious activity. It just results, and then it becomes a requirement and then a drudgery in your life. Okay? So, so I'm going to say it again. Everybody pay attention. If, if you bring and I bring a sacrifice of myself to the Lord, whatever that means, time, talent, treasure, whatever it means, but I have lost the awe of God in my life, I have a distant relationship with him, then that sacrifice is merely going to result in religious activity. And it's going to just be a requirement that I have to do to make somebody happy. Y'all help me in here. And, and, and then it becomes a drudgery. Can I preach up in here at Fresh Start today? But when you have the fear of God, it makes that sacrifice a non-issue in your life. When you have the awe of God up in your life, the reverence and the awe of his majesty and his love and his mercy, when you have the awe of God, that sacrifice is non-negotiable. Because you know what, you guys? I will sacrifice anything for somebody that I love with all of my heart. You will sacrifice anything for somebody that you love with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. A sacrifice is not a requirement. A sacrifice is not a drudgery when I love and I honor and I revere the one that I'm sacrificing for. Can I hear an amen? An example of a sacrifice without reverence is found in the same book that we read from last week. Just a few chapters after Leviticus 6 and Leviticus 10, we see Nadab and Abihu, which are the sons of Aaron, who Aaron was the priest. And if you remember that I told you last week that God sent the fire, but now it was Aaron's responsibility for keeping the fire burning on the altar. And now this had passed to his sons. And we see just a few chapters later, y'all look at me, just a few chapters later, after God had sent his fire from heaven, from his holy throne and his holy presence, just a few chapters later, I say it's a big deal when God sends his fire. And just a few chapters later, we see the priests, Nadab and Abihu, they are offering a sacrifice outside of reverence. They are offering a sacrifice without the holy reverence and awe of God. And God called that sacrifice a false or a strange fire or an unauthorized fire. And the result of that was that God's fire again came down from heaven and didn't consume a sacrifice on the altar. God's fire came down from heaven and consumed Nadab and Abihu. Come on. I'm talking about we're just a few chapters removed, and I don't know the actual time that I'm looking at there in reality, but it couldn't have been that long. They couldn't have forgotten that God told them the only fire that you're supposed to use to light anything in this area is the fire that I send from my holy presence. But they got familiar with God's fire that he has sent from his holy presence, and it wasn't convenient for them to walk over, if you will, and do what he had asked them to do. It was was it convenient to do it the way God said to do it? So they created their own way. They created their own pattern. They created their own paradigm. They created their own agenda and their own thing that made them feel okay. And God says it may be okay with you, but it's not okay with me. Fire came from heaven and killed them. Well, clap your hands on that one. Glory to God. Amen. Come on. It's real, y'all. And then, and then Moses said, hey, Aaron, it's like the Lord spoke saying, Leviticus 10, by those who come near me, I will be treated as holy. And before all the people, I will be honored. He's holy. It's a really, y'all, it's a really big deal when God sends his fire. It's a huge deal. It's amazing. Now, Leviticus is all about holiness. It's all about the holiness of God. It's all about how God should be worshipped. It teaches us, the book of Leviticus, that God is a holy God. He is infinitely perfect. And that sinful people cannot approach a holy God. Now, that was Old Covenant, and we are in the New. But the story of Nadab and Abihu 
is about a totally different worship system, but that worship system was divinely inspired by God. And it is still inspiring our worship today. Are you with me? God still has things that he needs to teach us from that incident. Are you ready for it today? You see, the blood of Jesus removed the need for animal sacrifices, but the blood of Jesus did not remove the need for the heart and the life sacrifice as we worship him. Am I making sense? So this is the same, same scene that we talked about last week when God sent his fire. But now they are, they are in front of the place where God sent his fire, but they are familiar with it. They were taking for granted the gift that God had given them to lead the people in worship. It was a, a privilege that God had graced them with as priests. They took that for granted. They also began to worship, as I said, in their own way and on their own terms. And, and most significantly to me, they forgot that God was holy. They forgot God's holiness and his transcendence. They forgot that God was not like them. They forgot his glory and the fact that God is far above them and different from them. They became over familiar and they did not come before him with reverence that was due him. Are y'all still in the room today? Hallelujah. This passage of scripture, I, I give this to you before I go back to Moses because this passage of scripture is where a lot of the church is today. This passage of scripture is where a lot of the body of Christ is today and this is not the posture for the fire of God. This is what, what the posture for fire is not. But what we see from Moses is we see that his encounter with the fire of God shows us a correct pro posture and even protocol that must be assumed when God sends his fire be, and anything that deviates from that posture can quickly become false fire because when God sends his fire, it's a really big deal. Come on. So fresh start, this is very important as we consider the presence and the revival and the glory that has been graced to us here in our house. May we assume the correct posture so that the fire will continue to burn because it's a really big deal when God sends his fire. Amen. When I say posture today, I'm not necessarily talking about a physical motion per se, even though it will result in that. But what I'm speaking about when I say posture is an attitude and a disposition of the heart. Are you with me? A posture for the fire of God because it's a really big deal when God sends his fire. And we see in Exodus chapter 3 with this story of Moses, the posture for the fire and you look in verse 3 and you see the first thing that Moses does when he sees the fire is he says I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight why the bush is not burned up the first posture if you will for the fire is that we must turn aside now for Nadab and Abihu who I just told you their story it had become a ritual and they didn't take the time to be intentional. They just grabbed at whatever was at their convenience. Are you following me here? But what happens here, I want to break this down, and, and we're going to move on to number two here. But what happens is, the contrast here is that Moses, the Bible specifically tells us that he took time to turn aside. You see, Moses had been in 40 years in the wilderness watching sheep. And the Bible says that he came at 40 40 years, he finally came to Mount Horeb, which was the mountain of God. Now Moses had been in this area for 40 years, and I'm quite positive that that mountain was not a small mountain. And Moses had never been on that mountain before. It's not like he had never seen it, but he knew it was there, and he finally decides to go there. Are you with me? The mountain of God. There are other mountains in the territory, my God. There's other mountains in the territory. There's other mountains surrounding. There's other goals. There's other pursuits that are around him. But he finally found the mountain of God. I'm saying when you do your time in the wilderness, God will lead you to his mountain to speak his word at his time for his purpose and not yours. 
And it says that this flame was burning. And I always thought from Sunday school up with the flannel graph and all that, I always thought that the bush was just like, you know, all just really blazing. But really the Bible, if you study it, it says that the the flame was in the middle or the midst of the bush. It wasn't necessarily all consumed with fire. So Moses had to take time to not continue to do it his way, but to do it God's way and to say, you know what? I'm not just going to keep going after these sheep and doing my own path. I'm going to intentionally turn aside to see the fire in the midst of the bush. The word turn or the words turn aside there has a very strong meaning with it in the Hebrew. It means an intentional turning of your attention to something. Come on y'all. An intentional turning of your attention to something. An intentional turning of your attention to something because it's a really big deal when God comes in fire. Yes. It was as if God had been waiting for Moses to come for this mountain. Okay, you know, God doesn't live in time, but it's like, you know, God been waiting for Moses to come to this mountain so that Moses could encounter this sign that he had set up for him there and so that God could give him his directive. If you look in the, it's not going to be on the screen, but in Deuteronomy chapter 33 in verse 16, the Bible says that the favor of God was with him who, of him who dwelt in the bush, the favor of him who dwelt in the bush. Now, watch me now. i got to connect this to show you about intentionally turning. Nadab and Abihu lost their life because they lost their reverence because they decided that they didn't want to take time to give God their full attention. Is anybody still preaching with me today? But Moses turned aside to give God his full attention. And that, that word dwelt there means that God had chosen to settle down and to dwell with his fire presence in the middle of that bush. You guys listen there is no telling how long that God's fire was burning in that bush on that mountain because it was the mountain of the Lord. Come on. It's quite possibly that the burning bush may have been there for years and years. Matter of fact, it's quite possible that the burning bush was there in year number one and now oh, and now it's year number 40 and Moses is just now making his way to God's mountain like many of us. Come on. I want to tell you today that God has a bush that is burning for you and he's in the midst of it. He wants to meet with you. He's eager to talk to you. He wants to release destiny over you and purpose. But I must tell you, fresh start, you've got to give him your full attention. He caught in the mountain of the Lord. He paid full attention. When God saw that Moses had took time to turn aside, and when God saw that he had Moses' full attention, because it's a really big deal when God sends his fire, then God spoke when he had his full attention. And this is one of the reasons that we know that Moses learned to recognize what the Bible calls the form of the Lord. Put Numbers chapter 12 up there. The form of the Lord is the manifestation or the manifestations of the Lord. He recognized the Lord and the manifestations of the Lord because he continually took time to intentionally turn aside and give him his full attention. To recognize form, to recognize manifestation, to recognize fire, it takes a turning and giving him our full attention. See, fire can be all shikimashi. Fire can be all around you, and you not know it because you don't recognize it. Some people have been out of the fire so long. I'm talking about Pentecostal people. They've been out of the fire so long they don't even come to expect it anymore when they come to church. Are y'all helping me in here? Come on. They don't come to expect it. It's one thing to expect it. It's not to expect it. It's another thing not to recognize it. And we don't recognize things because we doesn't have our full attention. Full attention. 
And so, so this scripture says, put, put, put the, the, whatever that was, numbers up there. Uh, if there is a prophet of the Lord among you, I shall make myself known in a vision. I shall speak to him in a dream. Look, look, look. Not, do I not have that scripture on there? Okay, just listen to me. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. Watch. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even openly and not in dark saying. He beholds the form or the manifestation of the Lord. The word behold there is that he is paying attention and living a life that is in reverence and regard to the Lord. Amen. Amen. God will manifest, church, on his terms, not our terms. Our responsibility is to be in the correct posture. Our responsibility, my God in heaven, is to be on the right mountain. Come on. Our responsibility is the first thing from the posture of Moses is that we must give him our full attention because full attention gets full manifestation. Full attention gets full manifestation. We've got to be intentional to turn aside and give him full attention and, and climb the right mountain. There are so many people in the body of Christ today and we're too busy. We're too busy chasing the next best thing, the most popular trend, the habit, the high hobby and even the latest fad and even the latest church growth technique all the while God has a fire for you on his mountain he has a burning bush that has every instruction every bit of prosperity everything that you need in your life it's on the mountain of God in the middle of the bush it's a big deal when God sends his fire He's waiting to reveal to you. But even greater than the purpose and the plan for your life on the mountain of God, he wants to speak to you those things. But even greater than that, he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to reveal his character. He wants to reveal his form. He wants to reveal his voice. And if we give him our full attention, how many know he will reveal himself to us? It's a big deal when God sends his fire. But I'm telling you, church, I'm telling you, and all those that are watching online today, for whatever reason that you're tuning in, listen now. Our microwave 55-minute-a-week services, fitting God around all of our other activities, is not giving God our full attention, which is why we're not seeing the full manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost in our Pentecostal churches. Turning aside means that I give him my full attention and that I turn from any other thing that is pulling on me, that is dragging me back down God's mountain and making me climb another mountain. I'm here to tell you today, get off of the mountain that you have built for yourself and start climbing God's mountain and he will pour out such a blessing and such a presence that you have never been able to imagine or think or dream. Got to get rid of that mentality. Moses stepped out of his normal path, his normal duties, his normal time schedule, his normal, his normal routine. I got a bedtime. Do y'all have a bedtime? Are y'all willing for God to mess up your bedtime? Come on. I just kind of fit that one in there. Glory to God. I see, I mean, you know, like, like I, I can't do this. I got I to gotta go to bed here. I got to get up here. I got to make this appointment. I got to make that appointment. Come on. Can God really mess up our schedules? Come on. So that he can really, really speak to us what he's wanting. It's a big deal when God sends the fire. I want to be able to recognize the fire. I want to be able to recognize his manifestation. I want to be able to recognize his form. It, Moses stepped out of his normal routine. And he climbed the mountain of God. Mountains represent pursuits and goals, achievements. Hashakataya. Mountains. You've got to climb this mountain. Climb every mountain. Don't climb every mountain. Climb God's mountain. Goals, achievements, pursuits. Ah, got to do it, got to do it, got to do it. American dream. Climb God's mountain. The fire of God is not on every mountain. It's on God's mountain. And remember, God had purpose to reveal to him. So let's stop wasting time climbing mountains. That one day, I mean, guys, really, seriously. I mean, if you really love the Lord, you're going to be searching for his mountain and not your own. And don't try to make your mountain God's mountain. The, this is the Lord's will. This is God. I'll move on to number two. Are y'all ready? Fire commands a response. Exodus chapter three, verse four. 
the Lord, when the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside, that he had given him his full attention, God called to him from the midst of the bush, and he said, Moses, Moses, it's amazing when God calls your name. It's a big deal when he comes with fire. And Moses made this response, this posture. He said, here am I. This point won't take me very long. I'll go on to number three, but this is very significant in the posture for the fire, fresh start. There are three powerful words. Excuse me, there is one word that makes up, one powerful Hebrew word that makes up three English words, our words, which means here am I, and it's called hineni in the Hebrew. When God called Moses and he said, here am I, he was saying in Hebrew, hineni. Why is it a big deal? Hineni was a way of expressing total readiness to give yourself to God. Offering all of your availability to God. When God called out Moses from the burning bush, Moses said, hineni, here am I, God. And then following that, God began to speak to Moses, and he said, all right, now that I have your full attention, I'm calling you and putting you in charge of one million plus people, Moses, and you're going to go confront the most powerful person in the known world right now. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When God called Abraham and approached him to offer a sacrifice, Abraham didn't know that he was going to ask him to offer, uh, to, uh, offer his son his promised son as a sacrifice. But he approached Abraham and Abraham responded the same way. Watch, Hineni, here am I. He didn't know he was going to have to give Isaac. But because he was obedient, God was preparing him to birth through his lineage the power of the power of God. Throughout. We're living in the blessing of Abraham right now. Come on. Hineni. God called a young boy named Samuel three times. Samuel finally responded, Hineni, here am I. I am listening. And after he assumed that posture before the Lord as a young child, he, a, a most powerful prophet was birthed when he assumed the right posture. Here am I, Hineni. A hundred or more years later, God was searching for someone that he could send. And he went to Isaiah the prophet. And Isaiah, he said, who will go for me? And Isaiah Isaiah said, here am I, Hineni, send me. Why are you making such a big deal out of that Hebrew word? Look, I'm not all up in Hebrew. I don't mind people that are, but I will tell you this. There's power when you understand a deeper meaning here. They did not answer like most of the modern church answers today. We answer God, here I am. We don't say, here am I. We say, oh, here I am, God. Here I am, God is all about me, God, I'm over here God come and you come to me God and you make up the distance between me and you God here I am God here I am with my need and my plan and my program and my agenda the emphasis when we say here I am is putting the attention on us and where we are and all about us it places the emphasis on where I'm at rather than where God is at but in these passages of scripture the word Hineni has a rich meaning that says, not here I am, look at me. It says, here God, here am I. And it means that you are offering to God your attention so that whatever he says after that, whatever comes after here am I, you are ready and you are willing to do it. As long as you're saying, here I am, here I am, here I am, here I am, catch me if you can. Here I am, here I am, catch me if you can. Then God is going to just let you run around. And you're going to be thinking you got a word from God, but it's not a word from God. It's a word from flesh, probably. Man, I'm just being so bold this morning. My word. So unusual. Somebody's got to say it. You know, we, we resigned a long time ago to a mega church. Come on, y'all. My husband and I. Help me now. It's not about making you happy. It's about equipping you. Come on, for God's best in your life. 
But when we're saying, here I am, if God brings a response after that that says, well, this is what I want you to do, then if you're coming with here I am, you're probably not going to do what God says after that. But if we come, here am I, Hineni, oh God. It's not about my location. It's about your location. It's not about me, God. It's about you. Then whatever he says after that, I will be glad to lay down and do for him. Can y'all handle this this morning? Hineni. And the final one today, the posture for the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when God sends his fire, it's a really big deal. In verse 5, we see the third part of the posture here. The first one was turning aside and giving him full attention. The second one was giving him the appropriate response. That's not about you, but it's about him. And the second one, excuse me, the third one, he tells Moses, he says, don't come near here. Remove your sandals, your shoes from your feet. Because the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Holiness follows his fire. And it's a really big deal when God sends his fire. Everywhere that God manifests fire, holiness will follow. Can we handle this this morning, Fresh Star? God is doing amazing things. Lives are being changed. I told our staff this week, because it's a big deal for us here at Fresh Start, the atmosphere. When you're a revival hub and a revival church, the atmosphere is a really big deal. We don't just come in and tolerate any old atmosphere up in here. And, and we're getting so many new people, and, and you guys are, are, are amazing, your answer to our prayer. But if you weren't here in the beginning many times, you haven't walked all of the, the steps there. And so what we're doing, what I feel like, Holy Ghost, help me say this right. I feel like that, that as we're all becoming family, we're, we're relearning some things, come on, and even learning them at another level to protect the atmosphere of revival. Because, you know, I mean, if you're new to something, you come in on something, you don't know the whole backstory. That's why I preached like I preached last week. Are you with me? Come on. But God is taking us somewhere. An atmosphere is very, very important. And so I said that to say that reverence and honor is absolutely necessary in the posture for the fire. God announced to Moses that the ground was holy because he was there. The posture, church, for his presence is reverence. Now, reverence doesn't mean you always have to be quiet or you always have to be loud. Hear me now. It's a posture of the heart. Reverence was required in the symbolic gesture by Moses of taking off his shoes. Now, that was a a, a thing that they did in those days, all right? But it was an outward behavior that reflected an inward reverence. When the fire gets our full attention and the fire gets our appropriate response, the result will be a radical shift in our behavior. And inward reverence will always produce an outward behavior and response. I'm going to tell us today, as the body of Christ, our outward behaviors and patterns and, 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 and paradigms and, and priorities speak louder than we realize. Ah, it's amen or oh me. Come on, you guys. Come on, this is the last one. You can make it through this one. Amen? Are you ready? Are you ready? The posture for the fire, because it's a big deal when God sends his fire. Our inward reverence for God and awe of God will always produce an outward behavior that is, is appropriate to the inward reverence. When I lose my reverence for God, when I lose my awe of God, my priorities change. My behavior digresses because behavior follows reverence. Can I preach just a few more moments up in here? Come on. It's getting hot in here. Amen. Well, that's a fire. Did y'all know that last week the fire alarm really did go off? Amen. It did, seriously. It really, it really, and I didn't know that. How, come on, when the fire comes, it's a really big deal. Amen. 
Whatever you choose to reverence, whatever you choose to revere dictates your life choices. And when the fear of the Lord is lost, uh, our sacrifices, as I said in the beginning, our sacrifices become just religious motions like Nadab and Abihu. Come on, the fire, I'm telling you, if we have the fire of God up in our life, if we have the fire of God up in our church, it will never be boring. Religion is always boring. Hear what I'm about to say. The fire of God is never boring if you find it boring then you're not in the fire hear me now the fire of God is never boring religion is boring and let me tell you the difference between the two is the posture that you choose to take if you are in religion you'll take that posture if you're in the fire you'll take this posture and I'm telling you you won't be bored if you're in the fire of God amen we have in the body of Christ God help us a general loss of reverence and you don't of God and the fear of the Lord and you don't hear it preached about very much today because pastors and leaders and evangelists are afraid that they won't get uh, invited back or that they won't keep them in the pulpit or that people will leave their church. Look, I'm not standing before you in eternity. I'm standing before God and I want to give you joy and I want to give you peace and I want to give you blessing but I also want to give you the awe and the reverence and the fear of God because if you leave this earth and you do not have the fear of God, I fear that you even know God we've got to honor him here before we will honor him there it's got to consume everything that we are we don't like holiness preaching in the church today because it gets too close to our flesh but I came to tell us last week we should have put that flesh on the altar once and for all We've lost a general reverence of God. We've emphasized God as a friend, but we've wrongly minimized that this friend, which he is, he's also holy. He's also power. He's also creator. Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and with all. Say it with me. For our God is a consuming fire. See, some of y'all just think I'm up here preaching my opinions, but this is the word of God. Proverbs 1.7. The reverent and the worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and the principal choice part of knowledge and wisdom. It is its starting point and its essence. Come on. We don't even begin to have wisdom. We don't even begin to have understanding until we have a proper reverence and fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not being afraid of the Lord. It's standing in awe of God. And it's even greater than respecting the Lord. There's many of you that came in today and others that filed in churches all across this city and the nation that they respect. Respect God, and that's why they came to church. They respect God, but fearing God is even greater than respecting God. Fearing God is having such an awe and an awe for His awesomeness, and such an awe for His presence that we understand how much God hates complacency and how much God hates sin, and that His judgment will be on sin, even in the life of a believer. Now, we're not supposed to be scared of God. God will never leave us or forsake us. Nothing can take us away from the love of. God but you've got to understand this it's still a posture that I choose to make am I going to reverence am I going to honor him in my life or am I just going to respect him and wave at him from a distance I should have wore tennis shoes today the fear of the Lord is a posture of honor God said, and I'm closing, he said, Moses, sandals off, sandals off, this is holy ground. Ushers, I need you to help me, Ron, get your guys on it, okay? I need everybody to reverence this atmosphere right now. God didn't say anything else was holy except the ground. And he told him, to take off the one barrier that was keeping him from his holiness. God didn't call anything else holy around. He said, the ground that you're on is holy. And he said, remove your shoes, your sandals, because if I could say it like this, it is a barrier between you and my holiness. Just one thing can keep us from the holiness of God. 
2 Corinthians 7, 1. Let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You know, Jesus went into the temple one day. He started flipping over tables, y'all, because there were things that were competing with his father. He's like, no way. No way. Get rid of it. The fire of God's holiness demands that we draw lines. Y'all pay attention to me. They're just getting in place. Thank y'all, guys. Y'all look awesome. Amen. Glory to God. That ties be cut, that roots be severed. Y'all look at me. No closets, no secret, no junk, no filth. No filth. No filth. We had an incredibly awesome gap prayer meeting this last Wednesday night. And one of the things that came out of that was that revival raises the standard and it tests your loyalties. I pray that up in this place and up in your life and all throughout our city and even our nation and anywhere that God will give me a voice, I pray that the presence of God becomes so bright and so burning that it exposes every barrier to his fire. We got to recognize, church, the worldliness that we're tolerating and turn from it. Everybody's wishing they could go to lunch right now. Glory to God. The fire will not perpetually burn if we've got one foot here and one foot there. The allowance for compromise demonstrates that our hearts are not truly burning for Jesus. But where there is the fear of the Lord, where there is no fear of the Lord, y'all listen to me, anything goes. Boundaries become gray. Filters become thicker. Guidelines become vague. Am I making sense? The flesh is in the place that it likes to be and that's in control. You see, the less of the fear of the Lord that we have, the lower our standards go. I want to say something, and I want you to listen very closely to what I'm about to say. And I know people don't like me to preach on little cartoons and all this kind of stuff like this, but you hear what I'm about to say. Watch what I'm about to say. What the enemy has done is he has brought cute, nice little things into our lives. And what he has done is he has shrouded those cute, nice little things with his demonic spirit. And what we want to do in this country and in this nation that is being sent over from other countries of demonic influence, hear what I'm saying? We're wanting to keep these nice little things, these nice little little pets, these nice little toys, these nice little uh, cartoons, these all these nice little things up in our house. But we don't want the spirit. No, we don't want the spirit. With I'm telling you, if you keep the cute things, you keep the spirit that goes with it. You hear what I'm saying? You keep the cute things, you got the spirit that goes with it. I'm telling you, it's time that somebody stands up and says we got to run from carnality, we got to run from compromise, and ask God what it means to be holy. It is a matter of walking worthy of the Lord we got to walk worthy of the Lord stand up on your feet and look at these scriptures as you're standing Ephesians chapter 1 I beg you to walk and lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called with behavior that is credit to summons to God's service Colossians 1.10, that you may walk and live and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in some things. No, all things. Bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, clear insight, acquaintance, and recognition. Say with me. John 1, 1 John 3, 3, and, and everyone who has this hope resting on him cleanses and purifies himself. In other words, you take the initiative to get that stuff out of your life. Come on. You take the initiative to clean house. Come on, you guys. You are y'all ready this morning? Do you want the fire of God? Because when God sends his fire, it's a really big deal. And sometimes he has to clean house. You say, well, there's grace, there's righteousness. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, you are. If you know Jesus, you have his righteousness. But that righteousness and that grace is not a free pass to do whatever we want to do. As a matter of fact, that grace that gives you his righteousness is the same grace that empowers you to walk out a holy, righteous life before God. Come on. It gives us the power. Grace doesn't mean it comes into our life just to do and to get anything we want. Grace is there, yes, to save us and to give us Jesus. Jesus' righteousness. But these scriptures that I just read to you shows us that we have a part to play in, in becoming what God wants us to become. And that is holy. Now, let me sum it up by saying this, and we'll have altar today. Hallelujah. If you're visiting today, hallelujah. I'm not mad at you. Glory to God. It's just how I preach. Because I got to warn you. 
I got to warn you. Because this, we come in and we don't perceive the fire. You don't know the fire's here. You don't perceive it. Because you're on the wrong mountain. And relationship dictates perception. The closer I am to God, see, see the reason why the church has stopped preaching holiness and, 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 and cleanliness and getting the filth out and turning away from things that look cute and innocent and all this, the reason why we've turned away from that is because it, 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 people, people's flesh was greater, come on, than their spirit life. And they didn't want to hear that anymore. But then all of a sudden, we got all kinds of mess coming up in our families. Are y'all hearing me? We got all kinds of mess coming up. Oh, my God. Coming up in the church because nobody's dealing with it. And nobody's call, no, no one is clarion call to call people to a deeper relationship and a closer relationship with God. Because relationship dictates paradigm and perception. The closer you are to God, you don't mind holiness. You don't mind it. I don't think a thing about it. We don't. A lot of people don't think a thing about it. You know, a relationship dictates our perception. If I know God and I know His character and I know His heart and I know His word and I know He loves me and I know why He tells me that I can't do some of these things and I shouldn't do this and I should know about that and not know about this. The reason why is because He loves me and He has a plan for my life that He doesn't want any demon in hell to mess up. He doesn't want you to deviate from that. If I'm close to God, I know that. If I'm close to God, I see through His eyes. If I'm close to God, I see through eternity these eyes if I'm close to God I want to run his way not my way but if I'm distant from God if I have a hey here I am this week anyway here I am here I am this week God I'm here this week <laughs> this week I'm here <laughs> I'm here this week God here I am if we have that kind of relationship then preaching like I've preached today is going to make you mad it's going to make you feel very uncomfortable. The words that I've read to you from the scripture about cleansing our life and cleansing our homes and cleansing our atmospheres and environments as my husband has been preaching, that rubs us the wrong way because flesh is not in control anymore. And when I'm distant from God, I don't know his heart. I don't know his ways. His voice is faint maybe and usually not even, I can't even hear. I hear all the other voices because I'm way away from God. Kind of like the children of Israel that said, Moses, you go up there. We're going to stay down here. And all the while that they're down there, far from God, they were making a calf, a God that appeased them and their flesh. Jeremiah said, it's a burning fire shut up in my bones. When God sends his fire, it's a really big deal. I want there to be such a fire on the inside of me. Such a fear and a reverence and an awe of God. That I don't even have to discuss about trivial things that I mentioned a moment ago. That's not even, that's a non-issue. I just want to run to his presence and be with him and run up his mountain and get his assignment that he has for me to do. If I have anybody else in the room today that has the same heart, run to this altar right now because it's a big deal when God sends his fire. It's a big deal when God sends his fire. It's a big deal when God sends his fire. It's a really big deal when God sends his fire. Lift your hands in his holy presence right now. Begin to cry out from your heart right now. Begin to cry out from your heart right now. I want your fire. I want to know your form. I want to recognize the manifestation. I want to be on your mountain. Ha, Hineni, 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 Hineni. We will. 
your voices in your heart. Posture yourself this morning. Of God, come. Consume us. Consume us. Consume us. Yeah. Oh, fire of God, come. Undeniable fire. Undeniable fire. Consume. Oh 
would say to someone, uh, we're all at different understanding levels here today. And God is not trying to take time from you. Because a sacrifice without reverence results in religious activity. Just a requirement that I have to fulfill. God is not trying to take time from you in your life. He's not trying to take anything from your life. He's trying to get time out of you and eternity in your mindset. I've been doing this a lot of years now. Enough years that I can say I've been doing it a lot of years. And it's just the same old thing, guys, over and over. God's not trying to take anything from you. He's trying to get everything to you. And the struggle is real. I know it is, but it will never go away. The flesh will always fight the spirit. The devil definitely will fight the spirit. So you've got to determine. You've got to get the mindset. God's not trying to take anything from you. He's not trying to take time from you. He's trying to get time out of you. Because if you get to heaven, you're not going to be living in time. You're going to be living in eternity. So the more that I can possess that now, the more God can pour his essence, his atmosphere, his environment into me. I felt like I needed to say that because that's going to help somebody. See, our fleshly mentalities is like, well, God's taking from me. God's keeping me from this. He's not keeping you from anything. He's wanting to get you into everything. But you've got to get the right posture. Get off your own mountain. Come on, y'all. Get, get off your own mountain. Just go back down. Go back down. Go back down and start again where you left God. And then climb his mountain. Just say, Hineni, here am I. And say, Lord, may your majesty and your awesomeness become so real to me through your word, through my worship. May you burn brighter than any other light that's around my life. May your glory be magnified. May it drown out every other thing that becomes a barrier between me and your holiness. Moses, remove your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. For a start, I'm not asking you to take your shoes off today unless you just want to. But it's time for us to remove our shoes. This is holy ground. It's a big deal when God sends his fire. Lift your hands and let me bless you this morning. Shake it, get ready to sing. Some of y'all, before you leave here today, this altar is open. There's still some things that you need to settle with God. Stop negotiating with darkness. Cleanse your house. Cleanse your mentality. Revival, revival separates us. Come on. From those things that our flesh gravitates to. So I bless you now with the strength of the Lord. I bless you now with the hunger. A hunger. A hunger. I bless you now with the mind of eternity. I bless you now with an intimate relationship with the, with the Lord. A desire to pursue a relationship like you have never had before. I bless you right now. Oh, I bless your home as you cleanse your home of anything that is not righteous. I bless you now in the name of Jesus that the power and the spirit and the holiness of God invade that atmosphere. And most of all, I bless you with an intimate, powerful relationship with Jesus and that the fire of God would burn in your heart like the disciples on the road to Emmaus when Jesus was talking to them. After they knew who he was, their eyes were open and their hearts burned within them. I pray a burning heart in you in the name of Jesus. A burning heart. A burning heart. A burning heart. Jesus, a shout in this place this morning.